Enthralled by attraction by BTS Beans. Warning. Disclaimer. This is a pure work of fan fiction. Tungk sat in his office surrounded by the remnants of a long day at work. The towering windows of his high-rise office building provided a panoramic view of the city below. But the setting sun cast a warm glow over the room. He leaned back in his plush leather chair and pinched the bridge of his nose, feeling attention, headache, breathing. Despite the success of his business, he felt restless and on edge, worrying about the complexity of his work. An upcoming important deal loomed over him like a dark cloud, adding another layer of stress to the workload. He knew that the success of his deal would catapult his business to new heights. But the pressure to deliver made his mind race and his pulse quicken. With a sigh, he pushed aside the files on his desk, knowing that he wouldn't be able to focus on anything else until the deal was finalized. Meanwhile, Wen was done with her work, and after returning back home, she starts working on her current story. A sigh escaped her lips because even after trying, she didn't have any idea in her mind today. All the tension of work, suitable job, and this work as made was stressing her out. Wen stared blankly at the blank page on her laptop, feeling the weight of her frustration and stress weighing on her shoulders. The words wouldn't came to her no matter how hard she tried. The monotony of her work as a maid in Jeon's mansion was draining her creativity, leaving her feeling stuck and uninspired. Maybe a change of scenery or a short break could help clear her mind and spark her creativity. As she closed her laptop and took a deep breath, willing the words to come in her mind like a rain in dry season and past few months starts coming in her mind. When 23, cute, beautiful, charismatic, but fisty and bald, never let her guards down. She wanted to be a writer and maybe have her own book someday. But just because after graduation she won't able to find a suitable job, based well as she have to work here in Jeon's mansion at her mother place as a maid. Just because she have rents and bills to pay and moreover her mother was too old to work anymore. And her daughterly instincts will never let her mother to do work at this all age of 55. She have already done enough for Wayne, so at the end, having no option, Wayne accepts the offer to work as a maid at her mother's place now in Jones mansion. As she recalled her journey over the past few months, a mixture of emotions washed over her. She felt grateful for the opportunity to help her mother and pay her bills, but at the same time, she felt caged in like a pretty bird with clipped wings. Working as a maid at June mansion was not where she have in West for herself after graduating from college. She yearned to follow her dreams and pursue her passion for writing, but the practicalities of his life seemed to keep her grounded in this menial job. She let out a heavy sigh looking outside window. She wished she also had someone to rely on. Some tears filled her eyes remembering how her father left both of them for someone else as it clenched her heart. When either her mother's voice snapped her out of her thoughts and she blinks to not start crying as she composed herself by making a fake smile on her lips before turning towards her. Yes, mama, you need something? She smiled slightly. She knew that her mother was already going through a lot and the least thing she wanted was to add to her worries. Are you okay, when? When gave her a light smile to assure her. Of course, Mama, I'm fine, she replied softly, hoping her voice didn't betray her true feelings. Do you need something? Her mother gave her a light smile, but instead of replying her mother's next word, wrap around Wayne like a warm blanket in a cold. You will do it, my girl. I'm sure you will fulfill your all dreams one day. Just have faith on yourself and don't give up. She creased Wayne's hair slightly, making her melt on her touch. Her mother's encouraging words and gentle touch brought a genuine smile to her face and for a moment all her worries melted away. She leaned into her mother's hand feeling the warmth and love that only a mother could provide. Thank you mama, she whispered, her voice filled with emotion. I'll do my best to make you proud. 
I am already proud of you, my dear. Just focus on your goals when smiles with a nod. As the mother left, once felt her mind refresh, and with renewed domination, she picked up her laptop and began writing again, inspired by her mother's support and love. On the other hand, Jungkook was throwing orders on his team to do things by the way. Jeon Jungkook, 30 years old, young CEO, a successful businessman, personality, workaholic, loves work only, called I see roads, job and want each and everything perfect, have extreme anger issues. Jungkook was forced to be reckoned within his business world. His first determination and unwearing dedication to his work had Jeon earned him the title of young CEO by the age of 30. He demanded nothing but perfection from himself and his team and had a tendency to lash out anger when things didn't go as planned. To the outside world, he appeared cold and unapproachable, his icy demeanor keeping others at bay. Working for hours make him tired and he only wants to go back home and rest now. As he stepped inside the grand entrance hall of his mansion, his mind filled with exhaustion and frustration. His strong but lethal steps barged into John mansion only for him to bump with someone and let down a side end with closed eyes. Can't you see where are you walking? But his words remain in mid-sentence, hearing the pained squeal from the girl he bumped into, and he froze as if he got struck on his position to see the little beauty sitting on the floor, slightly squealing in pain. Oh my god, I'm so sorry, are you okay? He asked, quickly stepping closer to her for stand up, surprised with his own action as well. Where are your eyes while walking? She snapped, holding her arm, which got. Wasn't he the one who was supposed to say this? But staring at cradling her arm, a wave of guilt washed over him. He had not even noticed the woman as he walked through the ball, too preoccupied with his own thoughts. I apologize. I was not paying attention. I deeply regret causing you any harm, he said sincerely. His voice tinged with regret as he extended a hand towards her, offering to help her stand up. Let me see your arm. But instead, she pulled it away. Thanks for your offer, but I will manage. When tried to get up, but only wins in pain. And that's when she realized she not just hurt her arm, but left knee as well. She cleared him. As she again attempted to go upward herself, the pain from her arm and knees and sharp jolts of her body, making her wince in more pain. Frustration and anger welled up inside her as she shot him a fairy glare while gritting her teeth because of helplessness. Please allow me to help you, Bella, he insisted. His tone earnest went felt as she ran down her spine, hearing what she called her. I shouldn't have been so careless and I want to make amends. He extended his hand again. Jungkook's eyes feeling a mix of remorse and helplessness for some unknown reason as he stepped closer to her. She felt her cheeks flushed, which she composed immediately, and with a frustrated huff, she finally relented and extended her hand towards him. As he gently took her hold, her hand, a surge of electricity seemed to pass between them, catching them both off guard for a moment. Both staring each other's eyes for a few seconds, ignoring the unexpected spark. He held the stand up, his touch firm yet surprisingly gentle. Are you able to walk? Let's try to move towards the couch, she suggested. His tone laced with a hint of concern, one gulps a lump as she tried to walk while in pain. It's hurting. She unknowingly pouts as if ready to cry, but no let a single tear out of her eyes. Taking a deep breath, she encouraged herself to let manage her matter on self. It's okay, I'll manage, she mumbled as she tried to take spot from nearby wall and struggled to walk without. Jungkook could see the frustration and weariness at Shona's face, though she was trying to keep her compire. Stubborn woman, he murmured underneath his breath when massaging his temples. Let me, he stood and he gently placed her arm over his shoulder. Lean on me, please. When staring him for a second, fighting her own battles, Throughout her whole life, make her strong, independent woman. 
and she never lay on anyone for anything. Bruce said in her, in her today, told her to let accept his offer, and she did what he told her. Because underneath her first and independent exterior, a small part of her yearned for a spot, even if she wouldn't admit it out loud, a silent tear rolled down her eyes. Don't cry, Bella. These tears are too precious to waste like this, he murmured, his voice hoarse. As his long cylinder finger wiped her tears, and the moment his hand brushed her cheek, a shiver of electricity ran down her spine. Sending her heart into frenzy, she vowed to keep her expression calm and all, but she could feel the heat rising to her cheeks. May I? He suggested, and she nodded, unable to deny the sudden need to lean on him. All right, fine, she grumbled, shifting closer so she could put her weight on him. But the touch of a strong shoulder against her made her heart race even faster, didn't it make her sit and couch nearby. Wait, let me take first aid kit. It's okay, I'll manage the rest. But if it's already gone, he returns and suddenly starts cleaning her bound. And a hard touch, and he mumbles a little sorry and starts applying medicine more carefully. Her breath hitched for a moment when he apologized, was scraping up her cheeks. Perhaps there was more to this man between his cold exterior. As Jungkook gently cleaned her, she couldn't help but here and there, however, his delicate and careful little to send a strange flutter through her, her, making her heart beat faster. Despite her effort to remain aloof and distant, his proximity and his kindness were starting to crumble her walls, stirring up a strange mix of emotions within her. When Clitta thought after he came, Thank you. You're welcome. Though that's the least I can do because I was the one who caused harm when he goes and it hit her like a truck because... She don't even remember when she lost last time, and that thought immediately froze her. Well, Jingo couldn't help but smile back at her. Something about the sound and the way her eyes twinkle when she laughed caught him off guard. He tried to brush off the feeling, but it lingered in his mind, mingling with the memories of their brief yet profound encounter. As he gathered his belongings to leave, their eyes met for a quick moment, and a wave of realization washed over Jingo. There was something about her, something that stirred his soul in a way no one else had done before, and she left a married emotion swelled inside him. One wonders who was that handsome and mysterious man was, and why is she never seen before? A week passed, and despite her brief interaction, Bojang and Gwen find themselves lingering on thoughts of each other as they go to about the rest of the day. They can't seem to shake off the memories of this chance encounter though they tried to push each other out of their minds but thoughts of one another continue to surface making it hard to focus on the daily tasks however neither realized the depth of their infatuation and both are left with the lingering questions of whether they should ever see each other again two days later jacob was yelling in his room making each and every mate try a fight of his threat, and not comes everyone knew when he got angry he didn't listen to another person what's wrong when asked curiously to the group of mates when she was passing from there it's master jinkook he's angry we're afraid he will fire everyone at the ratio he's so angry and it's impossible to control him but why other trucks don't know when we tell lower lips great for her own life why no one is going to his room to see what's wrong? Jacob Wonders came as she almost yelled, flinching everyone. Isabella went and she got fired, ma'am. We're terrified. Miss Enjoyed sighs. Why not go to his room and see what's wrong? Wine eyes widened as she girls nodding, though she was a confident girl, but the picture Hercules gave her she was sure young master must be rude, stubborn. What's wrong? You need something, master? She muttered softly. Her eyes widened to see whose young master is. Her encounter with him comes in her mind, but looking at the mad beast in front of her, she almost shuddered on her place. As soon as Jingo hears her voice, he wills around, ready to lash out at the next person who dares to stop him. But before he can say anything, however, his gaze falls on a girl standing by the door. At first, he's taken aback. 
but then recognition branch on him it was a girl from the other day his expression softened for a moment a sudden urge in him to not show her his b side but it vanished as soon as it comes and he quickly regained his composure and snapped at her how he came in here without my permission he growled his voice tinged with irritation and frustration when flinched badly everyone was right i'm so sorry mrs jones i'm here you need something he clenched his with two long strides he goes in front of her look up he growled almost making her she were on spot but she didn't to see in monster's eyes his eyes turned more dark as he grabbed her from jaw with pressure and forced her to look up towards him never disobey me again you understand she can't help but not eyes ready to brim tears you work here she nods as a maid she nods again nervously upon hearing her words singh's face darkened even further he didn't want bothered by her to anyone from the matter of the fact well he was dealing with his own problems frustration and irritation filled him he wanted to ask her to leave but something in her expression stopped him perhaps it was her nervousness tearing self or those lost his eyes or maybe the sight of her trembling lips that made him hesitate he sighed heavily trying to calm himself what did mrs johnson you here for when we were brought to look at him why was she calling his mother by name um, i know she told me to see if you need anything because you were yelling continuously and don't want any maid to enter into your room can you please tell me what's wrong sir or if you need anything else she'll bring it for you right away she somehow managed to say in her own fear Jingle let out and the happy sigh as he stepped away and ran a hand through his hair in frustration. He was exhausted from his work and the last thing he wanted was to be bothered by some low rank maid. But he couldn't deny the fact that she was right. He had been yelling all day. He shot a cut nod. As he took a step backwards away from her, afraid of his own actions, I apologized for my outburst. I'm exceedingly stressed and everything seems to be going wrong. This gave me a moment to gather myself. If any other person will be here from mansion, they might go out to hear this. One looks around towards the massive room as if a tsunami hit the room. I shall clean up your room, may I, sir? Despite Jenkins' exhaustion and irritation, he couldn't help but feel a flicker of curiosity and intrigue. He stood at her for a moment, his gaze searching for any hint of ulterior motives, but all he saw was genuine concern and determination. After a long pause, he finally nodded. Fine, if you insist, but make it quick. When immediately started cleaning the mess he created, after a while, he wrote him back and his eyes darkened. After seeing the changes in his room, his anger flared once again. He couldn't believe the audacity of this girl to reinrench his things. His eyes himself flared with frustration and anger as he yelled again in anger, but for why and now? When I whitened, hearing his loud growl, fear raised in her, does she do something wrong? That was going in her mind. She hurriedly went towards the room only to see a furious young cook, breathing like a mad predator whom she never want to see in her lifetime before. Yes, yes, sir. She stood outside. What the you do you think you're doing? How dare you touch my things without asking? Do you have any idea how important these things are to me? The sheer audacity of her in front of him as he clenched his fist. The urge to lash out his anger on her is stronger. I'm sorry, sir, but I was cleaning up. Wasn't I supposed to place things too? He clenched his fist with a single stride. He pulled her closer towards him, his strong muscular arm strap around her tiny waist. As she let out a yelp of surprise and fear, anger radiating from his body that she can feel more this lastly now, as he tinged his grip and she went slightly with closed eyes. Then why are not the only place? He yelled and no one patience was also turning low as she snapped her face towards him. And how am I supposed to know where we are their original place? She quits out first to the tears welled up in her eyes, betraying her vulnerability and exhaustion from her behavior. Jung's gaze softened slightly to see tears streaming in her eyes. Taking a deep breath, he took calm himself as he released his right grip on her waist. His expression softened even more as he looked at her. I'm sorry, he muttered, his voice laced with genuine remarks. I shouldn't have snapped at you like that. 
I just don't have any control over my anger. I sincerely apologize to you. Um, what's your name? When Clincher faced, was he bipolar or does he have a multiple personality disorder? She quits her teeth, eyes burning hole on his skin. Taking a deep breath, she tried to remain her compoyer. Um, why answer? Upon hearing her name, Jungle felt a strange sense of familiarity, as if he had met before somewhere. But that was impossible, he thought, as he shook his head, dismissing that thought. When? That's nice thing. He said softly, a hint of sincerity in his voice. I don't want to sound rude or anything, but have I met somewhere before, Amiyakara? One thinks, does this man really have less brain cells? Surely he do. As she blinked, her head does not. I don't think so. Not before a few days ago when you bandaged me in the living room. Can you please see my arm too? Right, he muttered, releasing her arm from his tight grip. A mixture of guilt and concern flickered across his features as he observed that red marks on her skin from his grip. Are you okay? Why take a step backwards, nodding. Yeah, you can tell me. Where's the place of everything? I will place them there. When did I look up after his thought was seeing her reluctance to meet his case? Jungkook felt his heart twinge with guilt. He couldn't see the discomfort and unease in her eyes, and he knew it was because of him. He hated himself for losing his temper and upsetting her with a heavy sigh. He gestured towards one corner of the room. The book's gone, the book shelf there. He said his voice much softer than before. And the papers gone on the desk. Why not? And within minutes, she arranged everything as he instructed. If you don't need any more help, I shall take my leave. As she turned to leave, Jungle felt a sense of loss and emptiness. She couldn't understand why this girl leaving felt so wrong. Without thinking, he reached out and gently touched her arm, silently asking her to stay. Wait, he almost did it. His voice filled with a vulnerability. He really shot. Can you, can you stay here for a moment, please? Went raised a bra in confusion, questioning. Do you need something else, sir? Jungkook's gaze softened as he noticed her confusion and took a deep breath, trying to find the right words to express what he wanted. No, no, nothing else, he murmured, shaking his head. I just, I should appreciate if you could spend some more time in my company. This loneliness, it gets overwhelmed sometimes. He knew how desperate he sounded, but he couldn't help himself to care. Not in front of her, something about her presence confronted him in ways he couldn't explain. When staring him for a few seconds with a different emotion, she knows what loneliness actually means is growing up, she was all alone, and as much as she want to leave, she nods. Instead, and a small surge of relief rushed through Jungkook at a nod. He gestured towards the chair in front of her desk. You can sit if you want, he offered, hoping to seem hospitable. I promise I won't yell again, he chuckled nervously, trying to lighten the mood as they both took their seats on the comfortable chairs in his room. The silence between them was uncomfortable, but beneath the surface there was a strange connection forming. He couldn't explain it, but just her presence made him feel slightly better. To not make her feel uneasy, he opened his laptop and pretend as if it's working, but in real, it was just staring her secretly from time to time. Why are you dying to be Mia Kara? he murmured in his mind. Where are your age? Well, look up on his sudden question to see him, who was still focused on his laptop. 23, sir, he nods. Any boyfriend? Before I stopped himself, the question was already out of his lips. One was hesitant at first, but then she whispered, I know, but I'll just shake her head, and a secret smile ghosted on his lips, which he tried his best to hide. He couldn't understand why he felt alive to hear that she was single, but he brushed it off. Any special someone you're interested in? He inquired, his voice casual yet holding a hint of curiosity, his finger drummed impatiently on the table. A sign of inner excitement to her response, he couldn't believe what an effect she was having on him just by simply being in the same room and when she her head as long and his smirks in triumph. That's right. He was glad he didn't spoke those words loudly. Sooner you will be mine, baby, he smirks. Just wait and watch, baby. His eyes lingered on her body from top to bottom. 
can't wait to make you mine, Mingakara. To be continued. <laughs>